So we're going to do something a little different today. Uh, I have this strip of RGB LEDs. And it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's 96 LEDs long. Each of these white squares is one. And then there's also this chip that um, uh, helps, uh, basically controls the LEDs so that um, each LED on this chip can be individually controlled in terms of color and intensity. So, um, I thought I'm going to make an LED matrix out of this. 96 is, uh, makes for an 8 by 12 matrix. Um, and so what I'm going to have to do is cut apart this strip, which is pretty long. So, uh, if you look at this, let's see here. Well, um, there is a, a little uh, dividing line um, that uh, can be seen about every two and a half inches, I would say. And you can actually cut it apart at that point, and it will not hurt it. So what we're going to do is count the LEDs. One, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Okay, so this is the dividing point that I want to cut along. And yeah, just take a pair of scissors and do it. So now I have this strip that's 12 long, if I counted right. And then I'll just cut up the rest of it in, until I have eight strips that are 12 LEDs long. So let's look at this. Um, there are four leads here. I don't know how easily you can see this, but um, the top one's ground. The second one is, is data. The third one is clock. And the fourth one is um, 5 volts. And that's really all you need to control an entire strip of these. You could have, you know, a, dozens of LEDs just controlled by four pins on the Arduino. It's pretty slick. So what we have to do is um, connect. Like, okay, so we have this, we have this, this, this matrix here that we're building. Um, The end of each strip has to connect to the next one down, whoop, like that. So it's going to be like so, and um, and and we'll use code to resolve the fact that the strip is going that way here and that way there. All right. Okay, I've cut it apart. Um, there's a couple of things of interest. I used this for another project already, so it has. Um, some jumpers soldered in at inconvenient spots. For instance, this one has 10 on one side and 2 on the other, and there's another one just like it. Um, so uh, what I think I'm going to do is um, just cut these wires and, and, and make them a little shorter, or much shorter, so that it matches the original spacing, because I want, we need to have the LEDs be exactly even or as close to even as possible just so it will be uh it'll, it will look neat if it's if it's kind of jumbled or or not not straight then it's going to look it's going to look weird and distract people so um so i have my rows cut the next thing i want to show you is this board um i cut it out in the laser cutter but it was completely wrong or somewhat wrong um what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these for spacing purposes. I basically etched a grid onto it. Um, and there will be, uh, I'm just going to hot glue these strips on there. But before that I do that, I need to solder some jumpers onto the, the ends here um, so we can control and power the LEDs. OK, I have it all wired up. Um, let me pull it out here. Okay, so this is the end. Um, the beginning of the strip, a uh, 5 volt um, pad here connects to 5 volts on the Arduino. The ground connects to ground. Um, data, which is the D, um, connects to, to uh, digital pin 2 on the Arduino. And the clock plugs into digital pin 3 on the Arduino. So, um, 
a couple of snafus in doing so. Uh, one, I thought I could hot glue these strips to the um, to the wood, and it's not working. So I don't I don't know. I might take off the weather stripping. Maybe I can just hot glue the um, the copper directly on. But I'm wondering if that's a good idea. So I'll think of some other way of doing it. Another thing that's very interesting for me is okay. Check this right here. It stops. Those last ones don't, um, they don't get, uh, get lit up. And there's no damage that I can see. And the fact that this is on the tail end of the strip makes me wonder whether, um, whether the problem is just that there's like a memory problem or something where it can't do the rest of them. So I'm going to look into that. In the meantime, I'm going to tell you how to, uh, to program this this LED matrix. Okay, let's visit the website for the the um, the digital LED strip that uh, we're playing around with. It's uh, it's pretty cool. It's uh, thirty bucks a meter and uh, thirty two LEDs a meter. So. So basically, the the strips that I used to make the matrix ended up being about a hundred bucks. Um, the thing that that we mostly need from here is the library. Um, so let's go and download it. And we'll uh, we'll install it as usual. Okay, let's look at the examples for this new uh, library we just installed. LPD8806, and let's go to Strands Test. The cool thing about this sketch is that it has lots of different cool effects that you can use, um, and it shows them all off. So uh, as you figure out what you want to do with your project, you can just cut out the ones you don't want. Um, for instance, this one's a color wipe. Um, and, um, this one does a, a pixel chase where the, the, uh, LEDs light up in turn. So it looks like it's, you know, racing down the strip. So what do we have to do to use this? Well, we have to change the number of LEDs in the strand from 32 to 96, because there's three meters of it. Data pin and clock pin are correct. So we should be good to go. Okay, here is the matrix. It's all programmed. Um, it doesn't actually have any matrix-like uh, attributes in terms of serving as a display. Uh, I'm still researching how to go about making like letter forms appear and so on. Uh, but uh, right now it has some cool visual things that were part of that test strand, uh, our strand test sketch. Um, this is the pixel chase right here, uh, and it's cycling through the colors. Now it's going to fill in the whole thing. Um, and as you see, I did figure out how to attach the strip to the board. I um, took it out of its weatherproofing insulation, which is definitely not recommended. But I couldn't think of any other way of doing it. Um, and I did a test, and I figured out that hot glue did work on the bare copper inside. Okay, now it's doing a rainbow, um, and then the next effect, it's going to cycle through the rainbow um, so that um, the colors will appear to move. You can see it working right now. Um, <clears throat> uh, and it seems to be fine. Uh, the um, This board that I made on the laser cutter was completely, it completely didn't work. Like... I had imagined that these lines, I could match up the LEDs on, along these lines, and they were in the wrong spacing. So, did something wrong, but I used the board anyway. So the animations uh, in the, the strand test, um, they're basically Arduino functions, and they're pretty hardcore, but I just wanted to show you a couple relatively easy things. Let's look at the color chase. 
um, that's where one um, pixel seems to move along the strip. Well, um, here are some things that we can change. There's the color. Um, you can see that there's comments identifying which color is which. You could change those. We could make, say, let's take this white one. Um, we could make it 100, 50, 23. That's R, G, and B. Um, and then, uh, and it's on a 0 to 127 scale. Then this is the speed with which it animates. Let's make it go fast. Let's make that 10. So whatever color 150, 50, and 23 is, um, moving at a faster clip than the other animations, which are all at 50, um, the lower is the faster, by the way. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so um, I uh, already loaded the code, so I'm going to, oh, I'm going to, it just went through, so I'm going to press the, the reset button to make it go through again. So this is our faster and differently colored chasing pixel. Look how fast that is, and it's slightly pinkish. Here, let's do it again. So, so you can see, I mean, you have the very, very, very beginnings of how to manipulate this matrix by addressing the individual pixels and um, telling the Arduino what color you would like to appear there and how fast you want to, uh, to transition. That's it for lesson one. In lesson two, we're going to learn how to make a digital clock with an Arduino, a real-time clock module, and a digital display. Thanks for watching.